What is up, y'all? This is JT. I just wanted to make a quick point. Uh, this saw is, it's an amazing saw. It's, it's almost as powerful, if not as powerful or more powerful than the normal Milwaukee fuel. It's an amazing saw. It, it hardly ever bogs down. And the only thing that I have found so far that bogs it down is these DeWalt. Uh, demo blades. These are by metal for cutting through nails and uh, These are quite flexible one thing that I do like about them is when you're getting up next to Next to anything they're flexible so that you're not cutting angles into wood You can actually go right next to them or underneath them When you're removing studs and different things so I do like that they're flexible, but they do bend easy and I just actually had to bend this one back. But you can kind of see there's a little kink right here by my thumb. And yeah, I need to cut my nails, but too bad. Uh, this saw, I like it. It's got this swivel head, right? They all have that. Well, this one, you can lock this one. I haven't seen that on any other model that I know of so far. And another point that I would like to make is these 3 amp hour octane batteries. Yeah, the octane is supposed to, um, you know, ramp up the power when needed. But I got to be honest, these are just 4 amp hour hyper lithium ion. They last like twice as long in the same tool. And uh, I don't want to burn these batteries out because I got these with my impact which is a Gen 5X and the hammer drill kit with two of those batteries in the, in the big charger. And um, But these tools, they last like twice as long because they're not upping the amperage when the tool is bogging down because you have a crappy blade. Now I really don't know what I'm going to call this video because it's covering so many different aspects, but I'm running the Gen 5X circular saw and this thing just eats through the batteries this thing eats through the batteries the um, the uh, what's it called job max what I, which I'm using for cutting away bad wood with the oscillating head it eats through the batteries as well so I find that the sawzall I don't use the circular saw as much but if I did use it as much as a sawzall it would kill batteries faster but on the this saw right or this uh, tool this this octane job Mac it just it does the same thing I think it actually destroys the batteries faster than the sawzall but yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm basically demoing out and replacing bad with good. And as you can see, I have this wall somewhat supported by double thick 2x4 that are treated so that termites and also moisture are not going to damage them again for at least 10 years, hopefully more, 20, 40, I don't know. It's a uh, prime two. And just look at the sticker real quick. It's yellow wood, prime number two, treated, treated using micro pro technology, copper azul. I don't know what any of that means. But also, this saw blade, I've been using it on the El Cheapo as sliding 10 inch miter saw. I have to square it up every time I use it. This Hercules blade blows through. I mean, absolutely destroys with minimal effort on these treated boards. And you can see, it just leaves a beautiful cut on an absolutely crappy saw and if I had just a better miter saw you know it would be amazing it, it would absolutely be amazing but that's just my opinion on the different tools that I've been using the, these tools are 
contractor grade. I'm not sold on the batteries. I think the limitation is in the batteries. I don't think these batteries are going to fare well and eventually they will go back to an older technology that's tried, true, and proven. Because even though this is a three and that one's a four, that one lasts like two to three times longer than this one. And maybe it's because they're putting more uh, juice into each stroke of this saw, but if I'm doing the same amount of work, especially when I'm using a dull, a dull D wall blade, I've got a Milwaukee one, but I really don't want to tear it up. Not yet, not until I need it. I uh, actually found this one on a job site. This is a double duty Milwaukee sawzall blade, it's a metal blade, but this is also, you know, considered like a demo blade because, you know, I found it on a job site. But if you're just cutting straight up wood and you know there's no nails in it, these pruning blades destroy anything in their anything in their path. They they are amazing. Now this is a straight up Lennox just metal blade. And they do not cut wood worth a crap. Then I've got an old Craftsman just wood blade that I've already burnt up and I've already bent it a couple times. This thing chews through wood ten times faster than this DeWalt. I'm kind of thinking if I could read the uh, the writing on this, this is probably mostly a metal bit. But as you can see, I hit like four or five nails, maybe ten at the most. And the teeth just fall off. I, I'm not sold on DeWalt. DeWalt, everything to me is junk. There's maybe a few exceptions. Maybe they're sliding 12 inch miter saw. But that's just an overview of what I come across on these tools. And all these tools, these are smart batteries. They actually keep track of how long you use them. They keep track of, you know, how many times you charge them and all, the, all these different things. Now that could be a good thing and that could be a bad thing. Um, depending on how rigid themselves use that uses that information, we don't know yet. But I've still got a lot of work to do, more than what I care to do. It's getting hot. It's supposed to be 80, like 85 degrees or 81 degrees, something like that. And you know gotta stay safe so I'm wearing my hard hat uh, I got my earplugs they're right here and wearing the proper protection this right here is unsafe and if I wanted to take the time I might take the time and clear myself a path just move these over because I can't get rid of these at the moment I don't have a dumpster I don't have anything to throw them in I don't have a wheelbarrow, I don't have anything to deal with that for right now, so what I can do is just kind of slide them to the side, it'll take quite a bit of my time, or what I can do like I've been doing is I'll lay just boards across of this, and if I have to lay down, I'll just lay down on it. So like when I pull these, these are to cover up holes in the wall, otherwise there'd be animals getting in, and as you can see, I accidentally uh, broke off a piece that was covering up a little hole in the wall so it's just going right in the house but I don't want to mess with with putting up plastic every single day and then taking that plastic down especially when it's not raining that much and also I still have all this brick to remove all the way to the front door all this brick well half of this brick will just fall off but all of this brick on this wall all the way down, all this brick, and as you can see, that's already out. And uh, if there's any wind noise, I'm sorry about that. And this little teeny section, this is no big deal. Uh, now that I say that, it'll probably become a hassle of some sort. I didn't actually get into this side to see if any of that is bad. If any of that is bad, oh man, this is becoming a nightmare. Because as you can see, all along there, it's rotten. 
all this siding is just rotten. So I'm assuming that whole sill plate on the foundation is gone. And I don't think there's a secondary sill plate. If there is, that's retarded. I don't know why they would build it that way. But if they did happen to run 2x8 joists, then there, there could be a possibility of a 2x8 joist sill and then a top sill for the wall itself. All that could be rotten. And I'm just crossing my fingers that that is not the case. But for the most part, what this video is about, if you stuck around this long to actually get to the point, is Hercules saw blades are amazing. Uh, rigid tools, they are amazing, especially the newer Octane. And they're probably working on the next thing coming out now. But uh, this impact is doing me a world of favors because I have one of these screw type jacks and it lifts the house just enough literally just enough to where I can pound in uh, new wood and it's also the type that has the screw input rather than the hook input so this is a necessity and in my car I've got a three ton hundred plus pound jack that if I need it I can use it but so far I haven't needed it I actually got one joist sistered in which let me tell you when you're doing from the outside reaching under there to screw that in it is a nightmare you drop screws I could barely pull the trigger on my impact it was just a nightmare and I'm working around you can see that there's a water spigot and because the bricks are removed that water spigot is now sticking way out if I had a way to cut that water off and remove that I would but don't want to really get into any plumbing but all these bricks gotta come down and uh, all this rotten wood just needs to be replaced what would, buy, what would be ideal is if I had the money which I don't to remove this whole entire window and just replace the whole entire thing you know from the ground up all these studs under here they're probably bad because you can see the rot but <clears throat> if you're still listening by now um, once you get into a project like this you know I hear people tell me all the time well you, you know you shouldn't look this deep into a project you should just do what you can with what you have and and this and that if you're not doing it right if you're not making all this rot go away this rot is actually going to penetrate into other parts of the wood because I have researched and found out that mold mildew and fungi are actually what continue the rot if you just covered this up it will continue if moisture gets into your crawl space moisture is always going to get into your crawl space if it's a vented crawl space then that rot's going to continue back further into your house and it's going to continue to rot it out from the inside out so you have to remove as much of it as possible because what this is is actually like a fungus all this stuff on here is like a mold or a fungus same same family of uh whatever in the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom but you got to remove it all and take care of it while you can like i've got all this side off well you know i don't know how far up it goes I haven't gotten into that but I'm just scabbing in structure where there literally was no structure this whole corner no two by fours none of them were touching anything they were floating and next to the window luckily one of the window studs and you saw you could see that in the previous video I uploaded and I just took a piece of 2 by 4 and kind of put it all the way down to the foundation and kind of screwed it in like that so that it's holding the weight so this thing's not going to collapse on me this is the danger when you're working on this type of stuff so you got to be careful but i'd say so far i love the rigid tools um these smaller batteries they're they're okay these three amp hours i'd say if you're a do-it-yourself they're fine if you're getting into stuff like i'm doing just 
go Milwaukee. Don't even waste your time. Because the Milwaukee batteries are, you know, they're a little bit better. I'm not going to say that these Octane, like a 6 amp hour or a 9 amp hour, I don't have any of those. I can't really say. But uh, your Milwaukee tool kits that you get, your tools that come with batteries, they're going to come with 5 amp hour XCP batteries and whatnot. These come with 3. So it may just be worth it. I mean, the Gen 3 Impact driver is the top of the line this is nowhere near top of the line the rigid impacts actually lack quite a bit but i'd say um when i bought this kit i was like yeah i'll probably end up just selling this drill you know this drill is probably junk this drill is amazing it's actually a better hammer drill than the milwaukee this isn't the octane version the octane version is better than the Milwaukee this one is up to snuff with it or up to par and this one's quite a bit lighter than the octane it's a, more compact it has the separate switches than having to maneuver the uh, clutch itself to put it in drill and and uh, hammer drill mode that uh, that irks me when they do that I don't like it the chuck is decent I have had it loosen up on me a couple of times but if you ratchet it down really really tight and you crank it no issues now the power on it is is actually quite incredible now all these new lithium tools you can't run this in second speed drilling out big holes because what it's gonna do is it's gonna overload protect every time especially in certain situations different woods uh, different bits if your bits dull it's just gonna overload protect you throw it in low it may still overload protect and that's what I that's what I don't like about these types of tools like a nickel nickel cadmium batteries they would not do that they would just go and they would literally fry your tool but they would not stop and so there's pluses and minuses on everything but uh that blade right there freaking amazing so I've got a lot of setup and a lot of work to do I haven't eaten today but yeah I don't even really know what I'm gonna call this video Ugh. but we're supposed to be on lockdown right now and literally I see people everywhere like people are all over the place walking around and riding bikes and doing all this stuff while well, I'm out here busting my ass trying to fix all of these problems that the uh, other people who sold this house did not they did not let any of this be known that there was floor rot that there was over in this corner they had actually scabbed in pieces and didn't even attach them so they were free floating like two by six cut down so that they could fit it's just a nightmare so I actually have to jack up the whole entire house one piece at a time like one time I'll jack up just the floor well the floor is not actually connected to the wall and in, in, in many many different cases that I've seen so far so this is going to be a multi-stage process lifting up the joists and the floor to get in new pieces and then the whole house will have to be jacked up a different way and what I have found that seems to work is if you can get your studs get in some new studs you know put a jack block across your studs and then jack the whole wall up now you're gonna hear popping and creaking and you gotta be careful you gotta take it really slow but that's why I'm using the screw jack because it actually, with my impact, this one right here, it's only like 450 foot pounds. I don't even know if it sees that, but it will not jack it up far enough to actually cause damage. Now with a hydraulic jack, something like that, you could literally end up destroying your house and have it fall on you. So just be careful with what you're doing. Be mindful and aware of the hazards and also do not saws all through cords because you'll shock yourself kill yourself something 
you just got to be mindful of what you're doing and that's why on the on the inside I've actually removed a lot of the drywall and that's how I discovered behind these bricks was completely fucked and everyone's telling me quit destroying quit destroying you're just gonna find more problems well yeah that's that's kind of the point the more problems you find the more problems you can fix and then the next person who buys this house they're not going to have that issue they're not going to have to deal with it you can explain everything that you went through the whole process you can even show them especially if you video and then you upload it and show them this is uh, kind of important if you're going ahead and doing all this work take pictures at the very least take video show everybody what you're doing how you're doing it saying you know show them that you're doing it up to code up to speed with whatever the building codes are at the time and actually if you're smart build future proof build it so that you know those next codes are coming around the corner build past build beyond build stronger than what it needs to be and that's usually what I do. In this case, I can't get in the crawl space to actually drive in carriage bolts. So I'm going to have to create either inside this room in this corner where it's all rotten out, cut it all out, make like a little crawl space hole. Because uh, there's also more stuff that I need to get to in that corner. Or what you can do is right here by the front door. If it's in the right section, you can cut out a section. I actually think the door is locked, so I can't show you. But you can cut out a section if you've got a whole floor in here. And then what you could do is come back and rebuild the subfloor so that it's at the proper height. You can use different thicknesses of wood, different thicknesses of the backer board, like a cement board, and then go ahead and lay some tile out. And what that's also going to do is, like, say you're coming in and out of the house and there's water or it's snow or anything. When you come into the house and you're on top of a tile, you want to build it big enough to where you can lay your shoes out there. Because wood does not like water. Tile is a little bit more sealed from the water, especially if you put, like, a sealant or a polymer in your grout and in your thin set. It's not going to cause as much damage. So that was my idea. My girl doesn't like that idea. I don't know what I'm going to do. But frankly, I've got to get under this. I have to get under this house, under the floor. There's about two feet from the ground to the bottom of the joist. And I'm a big guy. Like I'm, I'm not the biggest guy. I'm like 5 foot 11. Uh... Right now I'm weighing 195 pounds. You can see me in the in the reflection. I've lost quite a bit of weight, but um, still maneuvering. I've got long arms, long elbows. Getting in those tight spaces, I can't swing my arms. And you're talking about a guy that came from mechanics, like auto mechanics. So being in tight spaces is what I was used to. But when I was mostly into auto mechanics, I was actually around 100 pounds uh, somewhere around 100 pounds I was a little bit shorter my arms were shorter my hands weren't as thick and gross like a bear's paw so I could reach up into small spaces and loosen fasteners and get a ratchet on top of stuff and, and ratchet it but I can't do that anymore so you just do with what you can but anyways all in all, and if you made it this far into the video, congratulations, you have the attention span of a genius. But I, I would say that these are contractor grade tools. You know, if you use everything every day, like nonstop, you may have an issue, you may burn out a couple of these tools. And according to the um, warranty, it may take a lot of time to get your tools back or replaced whatever depending i don't know i haven't ran into that situation yet and i'm crossing my fingers that it doesn't happen but i did register all my tools so hopefully that doesn't happen but these are good tools this saw right here eh, 
the Milwaukee's gonna smoke it every time. I wish I would have gotten the Milwaukee, but also at the same time, I wish I wouldn't have ordered the stupid Gen 5X. I wanted the Octane because this is not even as good as the Octane. And of course I'm using a dull Diablo blade because the last time I put my brand new Hurt blade on there, I ended up hitting a uh, hardened screw. And then I looked at the blade closer and realized that half of the teeth were welded on sideways or backwards. Or... And so I, when I took it back, I looked, told him, I was like, these teeth were welded on the wrong side. So you had some teeth on the left of the blade welded. And then you had some of them that were welded to this way. So it was making a huge cut through these wood, through the wood, when this one right here was making a super thin cut. And they're supposed to have relatively the same thin curve. And so I looked at it closer and boom, it was messed up. I did get a replacement, but I'm not going to use it until I'm using fresh clean wood like this but right now since I'm demoing I'm just gonna keep this piece of crap in there that I found on the job site somebody just throwing it on the side of the road and yeah that's pretty much it on that but uh yeah this video got way too long so uh, my life well anyways peace don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, enjoy your life before they fucking take all our freedoms away, I guess. Do your thing. Get out there, work on something, mow your yard. I don't even have a mower here, so. This isn't technically my house right now, but it's supposed to be. So we'll figure this out. And uh, that's touching the ground. Whoops.